Hello. We're dark and, and gloomy today, like the weather. It's a little. We are. We're both dark. Aren't yeah, we? we are. We decided we'd be muted, <laughs> but in our hats. Yeah, we aren't gloomy. No. We're just dark. Yeah. We're moody. moody. Dark and moody. Yes. Yes. Like the Adams family. Yeah. All righty. So Wednesday we started part one of, or actually part three of the Saddlebag Saga, but it was part one of the Pommel Bags. Pommel bags. That's the yes. word I can't remember. So we've got Denny Tooled, one set, I believe. You got one whole set done, or was it just two eyes? I just had two eyes he done. He just had two eyes done. And uh, he didn't redo them at all to make sure he had his bead line in. That didn't happen. It was already there. Okay, we're super zoomed out. No, Luna, you're going to have to go. Alrighty. But here we are now. We've got four panels that are tools. So these are our little pommel bag fronts and uh, lids with their straps on them there. So those are all ready to go. And then it looks like you antique these and got yeah. their little Yeah, I took the liberty on of doing a few things so we didn't have to watch all of the videos. You want to tell them what you did real fast so uh, they know? I put the, the buckles on the chapes. C-H-A-P-E-S. He put the buckles on the chapes, with set it with a copper rivet. Copper rivets, yes. And I put the little tie strings, the bottom tie strings on the inside because... After you stitch the gussets on, those are pretty hard to get to. Well, you, you can still do it, but I did it. You didn't let me do a bleed knot. Oh, I did. He didn't. He he bleeded all by himself. <laughs> He's kind of looked like you've been bleeding. Yeah. You know that burgundy color. Yes. And I also put the buckles and shapes on the the front panel. I didn't. It does it on its own. I'm telling you, I didn't touch it. Okay, we're in action. I got it. All right. Okay. Okay. But anyway, now we're ready for the gussets, which is the main part. You know that that's the the part that really takes. You need to think a little bit. Otherwise, right. you're just gonna you're gonna have this much room, yeah. which is not very much room. Yeah. <laughs> Put a letter to mother in there or something. <laughs> but only one letter. But. <clears throat> We're going to do a pleated gusset, so I'm going to show you how I, I pleat the gusset. But first, I'm going to mark the center of these if I found something to mark. Okay. So I'm just going to fold these. And these are these are over length. Okay. But I'm still going to mark the center. And so this is this is Latigo. This is Latigo. And the, is you split it down? It's about to five ounce. Up to about five ounces. Four, four to five ounce. Because you need to accordion this. Yes. So it needs to be a little bit on the pliable side. Marking the center on both of these, and after there's the, after I stitch the front panel on these on the front panel, then I can cut it to length. Not before, because I don't know exactly what the length is going to be. Before. Now I've already marked the center points on the panels themselves. Oh yeah. So we have a center mark here, and then you got your yeah. Set. That's that's approximately where these where these front panels end up. Not too. Yeah, approximately. We might need to remark them before we approximately. Move, move. Okay, sounds good. But anyway, now let's let's make our pleats. So I'm just going to fold this in half. I'm going to start in the middle. I'm just going to tap this with a hammer. Latigo is really good to do this with because it really kind of takes the set easily. And you don't, you don't wet it at all to no, do this? No, you don't need to. Okay. Because Latigo, Latigo has a lot of wax and oils and stuff in it. Yeah. And it'll, it'll kind of seed itself. It'll help you. Okay. So make but sure I, your hammer is nice and smooth on the face. Yeah. Any kind of hammer will do. We'll get there, Dean. Dean is really curious if you use rubber cement anymore. But I think rubber cement has a very specific purpose. The only reason I used to use rubber cement is when I cemented the, like a piece of poster board or something to the back of a tooling project. Mm -hmm. I would use rubber cement because it peels off very easily. But I don't. But it, it doesn't have much holding power, so. I just don't have a use for it. Right. I think, 
like um, when Reiner was here with Rinia, he used rubber cement for his filler stuff um, oh, to do yeah. the, the filler in if you do the, the 3D leather projects and you've, right. um, what's that called? Like embossed yeah, them and, out. And fill. Yeah, and then you fill that back section with leather dust and rubber cement in a mixture. It just, it really doesn't, like, it doesn't soak into the leather. It doesn't stick all that great. Okay, I folded it in half. Now, I'm going to take and fold that, this in half, back the other direction. And again, start in about the middle. <coughs> Dean kind of thinks that maybe basting tape has has replaced what rubber cement used to be used for. Yeah, on some things. In a lot of ways, yeah. Yeah. I mean, basing tape has like a dual purpose in that it's it's really easy to put onto something, but it also gives you a very specific seam allowance. Like you don't have to worry about over gluing because your tape is you can choose the width, right? So if you're like, I need eighth inch, and it kind of gives you a little measuring thing without having to mark what you're doing, which is nice, yeah. and especially all, for the rolled edges. Yeah, if all you're using it for is to hold something in place until you get it stitched, it's really neat because you don't have to wait for cement to dry. Exactly. It goes on a lot quicker than putting cement on something. I've never used basting tape before I came here. I didn't realize what I'd been missing. <laughs> well, I think the fabric industry kept it a secret for a long time. I don't know. Or maybe it was more used in manufacturing and, and not so much in hobby, craft, personal use kind of situations. But I do feel like when I first started here, we, we had it, but it wasn't as hot of an item as it is today. Right. Like, you'd see a lot of people making walled interiors or really, like, things with a lot of rolled edges. It's really awesome for a rolled edge. Number one, if, you're, if your leather is thin enough and it wants to fold, a lot of times you don't have to sew it. If you've got basting tape on there and you roll it and you're going to sew the seam down on the edge, the middle will stay with just the tape. Um, and then I also, like, on just, like, on the top of bags, it's really easy to get your edge nice, cut, even. Put a, a thing of basting tape on there, and then you have the exact amount that you need to roll. You don't have to do measuring. You got a quarter inch basting tape. You're gonna roll it a quarter inch, and it just—it's really handy. Yeah. Beth wants to know if you're gonna start sewing your gussets from the center. Yeah. No. <clears throat> when I stick the two pieces together, I start at the center mm -hmm. and work both ways. But after I, if you get a good cement job, you can start at one end and go all the way around. around. Hey, it's Ron Mort. Hey, Ron. Hey, we talked about you on Wednesday. It's the it's the guy that sent you your custom hey, tooling uh, hey. trading card. I love it. I love it. I got it hanging up where I can see it every day. Welcome. Hope you're doing okay. Okay, there's our pleat. It's all done. Nice. Now, I get to do things. Yes, you do. <laughs> gonna, let me place this on here. Sure. You even say to double coat the semen. Yes, especially yeah. especially on the... Denny's the, instructions, y'all. Denny's instructions. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like the way I type? I love it. You did real good. <clears throat> okay, yeah, you want to double cut, coat this first one when you first put the, the first half of the gusset on because it'll want, to, it'll want to straighten itself back out. But if you double coat the cement, it'll hold it pretty okay. nice. The second, the, the panel side, you probably don't have to. You know what you didn't bring in is a rougher. That's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Oh, 
Here, let me go get it because I know where it is. You'll is never it visible? Yeah. I know where it's at. Okay. I stop your tools from time to time. <laughs> But anyway, after you get the the this this side, because when you when you bend this around, it's going to want to straighten itself back out. So, but if you double coat the cement, it'll hold it a lot better. The second side, the your gusset's already bent, so it's not going to be quite as stiff and quite as hard to hold in place. So I generally don't double coat it. There again, if you do, you know, that just added insurance. Mm. Boy, you must have run. I did. Well, I did like a quick jog. <laughs> so, when you said scratcher earlier, I, like, I heard scratch all in my head when you said scratcher. Okay, that's what we always used to call those. Instead of a rougher, we called them a scratcher. So, the scratcher. Yeah, because like you scratch it. Tickle and scratch. Okay. If you want to tickle and scratch your end here, yes. it's about a quarter inch or so. Okay. And I will cement this first side. Yes. Let it start drying. And then I will start cleaning. I'm going to do them plate on the other side. I do. Makes me feel useful. My wife was talking about her son. He was building something. He was building it out of used lumber. And she, she wanted so bad to help him. She said all he would let her do was go back and come back and come Yeah, that's the worst part. <laughs> all he would let her do. Probably the worst part. One time I was like, oh, well, when I made that headboard that's behind us over here, I I made it out of uh, reclaimed or like pallet wood, right? Mm -hmm. Some cool pallets that we had gotten in that were kind of extra long. Sometimes we'll get leather on, on pallets that will fit a full side instead of having it rolled up on just like a standard four by four pallet. And um, maybe this is a better way to do this than to go in it like this situation. I don't think that's a good way to do it. Anyways. Uh, that was the worst part, was like pulling all of the nails yeah. out of that stupid thing. I was like, I should have just put in about what is taking me a lifetime. <laughs> and pallets are the hardest thing there is to pull nails out of, too. Because they generally use those old ring shank nails. Mm -hmm. and well, eventually, I just, Philip's dad had a one of those angle grinders, and I just started grinding them off the back. There you go. And I was like, screw this. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Uh. Once you spread cement on this board, and then you can start scratching again. Spread. <laughs> uh. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Everybody's talking about how they appreciate your instructions. It's always. If I'm making like a really complicated sheath, I definitely, like as I formulate the plan of construction in my mind, I will write some things down. Like, don't forget to put this on before you do this. Like, make sure, or like one thing, I'm so bad about stamping my logo. And I've, I've been getting better, but for a while there, I would just completely, like, I just... I'm the same way still. Always forget. And, you know, I mean, that's an important thing. When you're making a custom item, it really... It, it needs a maker's mark. Somebody's buying it from you. And I, I'm a I'm a really big proponent of like it it needs it needs to be recognized that you're a maker, whoever it is that's making it, um, should put their name on it. Well when you buy something from someone else, you wanna know who made it. Yes. You wanna yeah, be able I'm, to tell everybody else who made it. Absolutely, yeah. Like I'm I'm excited about the fact that I'm purchasing this custom thing or just whatever, you know. I mean 
shoot, I mean, it's, a, it's like the lining inside my hat has a big Stetson on it, you know? Like, brands do it. We, we should make it. Anyways, I'm bad about that. So I, like, wrote myself a big note for a while that just hung on my wall. It was like, don't forget to do this. <laughs> so, the more complicated the instruction, the more important it is to remember all of your steps. Like, don't forget to put the button stud on before you sew the lining on. <laughs> and stuff like that, that piece of lace that's down there. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to do that. You can do it later, but it's not fun. Andy actually came up with a, a fun little solution. He had a, he's working on a little knife sheath that wasn't going to have a belt loop. It was just going to be an in-pocket sheath. And um, there was a little guard, and he wanted to put a strap on it. And he just had a nice uh, piece of, of thick, some some sort of maybe a buffalo print leather. I, I don't remember, but it was already thick enough for what he wanted. He went in and he took the um, the little pull-through skiver, you know, that you would normally skive a, a belt turn back yeah, a little, with. Yeah, yeah. and he skived it. from about two inches from the top of the sheath down into the sheath, but not all the way through the top, right? And then he peeled back that little lip, put his button stud in, and then glued that back down. So then he didn't have a seam on the top where he would have to stitch with two pieces of leather, if, you know, if you had a lining. And I was like, that's genius. Andy is pretty sharp. He's, he's pretty crafty. I hope he's not watching this. I don't want to admit to him that he's crafty, but I was impressed. Yeah, well, that's bad. He's bad. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I just use sandpaper when I'm scratching up my edges. That works. I like you just know, a good 80 grit and then my, like, just the edge of my thumb and I work all the way around. I feel like I have a lot more control than the situation that's happening here. You know, you don't have to scratch it all that well. Yeah, you do. You've got to soak in real good. you got to get it okay. all the way to okay. the edge. All right. Make sure you get a good seam. This is my edge OCD coming out. <laughs> Edges are important. Edges are the most important. Every time I meet somebody and they try to show me something, I say, I will only judge your edges. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of people that do really good work, really nice work, but then they don't know how to finish. Yeah. They, they, that's where they weaken. You know, the, the most important part, which is the final thing that you do to make the show good. Aren't they amazing? I think they're so... Guys, this stamp is so spectacular. It's such... I just love it. Denny and I were talking about it the other day, and it really just... It's just a really neat field. It is. It is. And everyone that sees it, you know, mm -hmm. even you guys. <laughs> <laughs> It's the S722. I, th I believe there's two sizes. It's either a 720 or 721. It's somewhere in there. But it's a specialty 722, which is, I think this is the larger of the two sizes. I'm pretty sure there's two. Because I remember you used it one time, and I was like, that's really neat. And you're like, yeah, we have it. And then I looked, and for whatever reason, it wasn't online. And, like, we had gotten, yep, I don't know. It was I one of those items that, that had fallen through the cracks. Yeah, Somehow. I've had that on my bench forever, and I have never used it, it. Yeah, we had had it, I think it had been years, and it just, I, something happened, guys. It takes, it's, it's a lot of effort to make sure that everything happens correctly, and sometimes it doesn't. So, you know, it's. And if you want cement that, that oh. panel there, 
Yeah. I think this one is probably ready to stick. Okay. Now I'm going to start in the middle, and I've got to be sure when I stick this, not stick too bad. There's my center mark. I need a piece of paper. Oh, there's some right behind me here next to the wall. Next to the wall. Yeah, oh, you need a piece of paper. Hey, Justin, can you grab a piece of paper out of the printer? Or... Yeah. Sorry, you can't have my orders. <laughs> I was thinking that would be perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. <laughs> Gonna put this on half of it. Make sure I'm sticking until I'm ready to stick it. Because when you double cement this stuff, put it together, it sticks. It's a one shot wonder. I'm pretty sure that the weather said it was only supposed to rain for like an hour this morning. Right. Yeah, I hear it. Don't you hear it? Oh, mm -hmm. right. Is this the good air dry over here? Dean, did you have your addresses in there correctly? I can look at it when we're done, but a lot of, if you don't have your address, um, sometimes that will mess up the, well, it a hundred percent will mess up the shipping quote. So you don't have addresses set. So will we ever get to meet Lefty or is that Tony? Oh, Tony is Lefty. It's the same person. We have three Tonys that work here. <laughs> uh, and so we have to, we have to like, differentiate. Who's this Lefty person? That we'll be That's really funny. About. I mean, we could call Denny Lefty too. We now just I'm don't. That is Lefty. That's really funny. Tony is in Texas today. He is 30 minutes into a softball game right now. The lamb description said Anthony. So I went, well, Darcy calls him Anthony. But we just call him Tony. But because we have two Tonys, like his email address is Anthony at Springfield Leather instead of because we already had a Tony at Springfield Leather. Yeah, I've made an email before. Yeah, so if you email Tony at Springfield Leather, it will not go to the like to the person that's in this room. It will go to our IT guy. It's fun, you know? It's fun. We hired one other Elizabeth one time. I wasn't too thrilled about that. I know, but she went by Elizabeth. She did go by Elizabeth and I I Everyone go by Liz. wanted to call her Liz. And we said no. No. But okay. she was I I was not they hired her when I wasn't here. But when I got back, I was like, all right, you did a good job. She was a good one. She was a good one. Yeah. All right. Okay, I'm ready to start stitching. Got that stuff down. All and right. Don't break whenever it you feel like that's ready, you can coat that again. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. I'm going to do one little short stitch on it here. Just to make sure. You like it, Ryan? They're They're pretty cool. It's a pretty cool snake. I think we're almost out. Last this morning, I went over there, I had an email. Somebody wanted one, and only had a couple. Hey, Justin, what is uh whatever that is? Three. Oh, uh, oh, sorry. No, you're good. I didn't even see he didn't have the bag. <laughs> Well, that's, that's probably the overnight shipping. Overnight shipping is stupid expensive. And even depending on what you got, if you have a two-day shipping, like, I... 
mean, sometimes people are in bind and they need things the next day. It happens. Hold on, everybody, We're going for a ride. Sorry. It's all right. If you move the, if you move the, mm -hmm. yeah, just pull the light back a little bit. It'll be fine. See? Perfect. As, as much as we're going to see. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, overnight shipping is stupid expensive. So, it's absolutely... You guys, I don't know if you remember, but when I was stitching that pommel bag up, mm -hmm. Or the that saddlebag. Remember, I brought two needles. Yes. I put in a bigger needle and a larger thread. I'm using size two hundred seven thread and size one four needle now. Same machine. All right. So we we upgraded our needle and thread size on this one. If you guys didn't hear that, right? The two hundred seven thread size and what size needle? And a twenty four. A twenty four. So hopefully we don't break any needles today. You can watch last week's for some quick needle changes. Yeah, that was, I don't know why, but generally a needle change takes me longer. <laughs> you, you. Half a day. <laughs> no. All right, Denny. So we're double coating this contact cement, right? You want to talk about how contact cement works and why... Two coats are better than one. Okay, the first the first coat of your contact cement on leather will soak into the leather, right? It will it will actually adhere to that piece of leather. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it will also, if if you do it right, it will adhere to another piece of leather when you stick it to it. But if you put two coats on, the second coat will adhere to the first coat, yeah. which is already adhered to the leather. So you're Doing a double whammy, bazinga! Bazinga! <laughs> Doubling up the strength of your contact cement. We have a red burner. Oh yeah, absolutely. This is the machine that I would get if you're making bags and purses. Um, is the class twenty six because it's a post machine, which means you can sew funky places on bags into weird gussets, things like that. It's not one of the super heavy duty machines, but it will still sew up to, it says seven eighths, I, you know, like a half, maybe it's three, it'll three stitch, quarters. It'll stitch quite a bit. Yeah. You, uh, it's not. Look at this. I mean, yeah, you that, can sew up to a, three layers of leather a solid half that. inch pretty easily, I think. Maybe it's just a half inch. I'm a little rusty on my sewing machine facts and figures. Um. And then it also has a table, so you can buy a table with it. I think the table is one thirty or something if you wanted a table, and then it will turn into a little bit of a flatbed. So making some of the smaller goods, that you know, it would be nice to have a table like a flatbed machine. It also, can be a flatbed. Ask anybody. The class twenty six is really it's versatile. It's very versatile. Pretty fantastic. Like you, like all your chaps that you make, mm -hmm. all your chaps, you use the the twenty six. Mm -hmm. um, I that twenty six is the only thing I've got over there. To me. Yeah, I haven't used class three or four in quite some time. Yeah. Almost everything I do has been under the twenty six. <laughs> yeah um so in our shop we have come up with a couple of different um visual aids for what is is currently happening in the machine and i do think that that's one i don't know if denny is specifically using it because 
this is his machine that he has in, in his section, so he may not be using some of those visual aids. But we did set them up. Somebody was asking if that 21 on the end is the needle that's in the machine. By rights, it should be. Exactly. It is not in this particular situation, but that is something that we have done. And so, like, on the front of a lot of our machines in the shop, there is magnets with different numbers with, like, needles on them. So it's it a really quick change. It also has a needle size and thread chart. Yeah. Know, which size needle you use. But, <clears throat> you know, in our shop, there's several different people that might be using the machine. So if they're walking up to a machine to stitch something, you know, and it's got a size 18 needle and a 69 thread or something like that in it, you know, it's readily apparent. Ex size. Exactly, yeah. So we try we try to do that to make sure that just a, a visual aid. It is really handy, and especially, like Denny said, if you have multiple people using the same machine. Oh, Denny. <laughs> don't, don't push that pedal yet. My big feet. <laughs> After I get this stitched, I'm going to go to the singer who stitches that well to be entertain people. Okay, I'm reading comments right now. Good luck to you, Brian. I hope everything goes good. He has his first event tomorrow. Oh, I had my I had my first event yesterday. Wish me luck. I hear words don't make sense. I assume because tomorrow, yesterday was was Thursday, which is a weird day to have an event on. Not that events don't happen on Thursdays, but. If you have it, then you didn't have it. And then if I'm wishing you luck, did it go well? <laughs> is it going to go well? I'm confused. Your pun is not computing. And he made sure he didn't stitch his, his little ties yeah. into his seam. <laughs> Good job. After you've done stuff like that enough times, you learn to keep it out of the way. <laughs> Sometimes you learn. Okay, I'm going to go sand these down. Oh. You can, if you would like, cement, cement those two pieces. Would love to do that. All right, we're cementing our front panels. I will never. You better. If I don't, you're on your own. <laughs> could could you get a multi punch there, Brian? Could could you could you do multiple holes at once? We have some that punch like four or five holes at once instead of one. Have you tried? Have you tried that? That seems terrible. I mean, although I do hand sew as well, and I, I've got my chisels, but then I have to do the all thing one at a time. What kind of event are you setting up at? break a lot of uh, blades when well, I don't break a lot of blades I break some blades all blades while I'm while I'm sewing but I don't tend to break too many needles although there is if you're using the the needle um, the big eye harness needle that needle is way easier because the the eye is so fragile 
um, the hole was really long. I don't know, it was probably like a half inch long, I think. Maybe not quite, but it's, it's around there. And so it is a lot easier to break those little those little sections than when you're using just a standard harness needle because the eye is a lot smaller. But that's why needles come in like 25 packs. And they have plenty of them. Or Intact Western type sale. Is anybody going to Prescott this coming week? I think that's this this coming weekend. Is it this weekend or is it next weekend? Anybody know? We had a we had a coffee banner situation next weekend, so we had to hustle out a new coffee banner. I mean, the coffee was still going to be there. You just may or may not have known that it was provided by Springfield Leather. He made it back. How exciting. Oh, Denny, Denny would never abandon me. Or at least not on purpose. Yeah, I might forget. All right. Now that, now that I made these edges nice and flush. You're going to take a number? <laughs> a number three common edger. <laughs> I'm going to take a number. <laughs> He's going to take a number. I'm doing this now. I could do it later, but it's so much easier to do it now than it is with that other piece. The other piece I will have to do. Denny looks like he's walked off the set of Lonesome Dove. <laughs> I Ooh. didn't. We don't rent pigs. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's, that's what they said. We don't, we, we don't We don't rent, rent pigs. pigs. You've never seen Lonesome Dove like mm -mm. No. I sure haven't. There was a couple when we were in when we were in Texas at the at the Lisa show this past January. Kevin was telling me some of the old movies that I needed to watch, and I don't remember what they are now. But I sent them to Chris, and there was it was it was a couple old old westerns, and I still haven't watched them. Don't tell Kevin. <laughs> I think he's a classics fan. <clears throat> no, he's not the most Western person I ever met. I didn't bring in my water and rapid boat. Oh. That's okay. I do that all the time. Okay. I might as well get it while you've seen that piece. All oh, right, I have more work to do. Sorry, so quiet. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. I did that last night. This is like, why aren't you talking to me? And then I, I made some weird noise. And I was like, this is what I got. <laughs> I still think you both should audition for a movie, especially voiceover. Ah, oh, that means Patrick is not annoyed by my, by my crackling. <laughs> Thanks, Patrick. Uh, do, do you want to trim this at all? No, I'm going to trim it after I get the other piece off. Okay, but I don't need to. Because usually I, I do this piece first, and then I can trim it because it doesn't matter where it ends up on the back panel. Gotcha. But if I trim it now, it might not match up right away. Okay. I just kind of make sure I knew where to glue. I don't need to glue all the way to the top, but I'll I'll go over where I think that we need to be. They are plenty long. Keep the plain water here. Just good old tap water right out of the sink. Good old Springfield, Missouri, custom water. We make it ourselves. Comes from fellows. The fellows, the fellow. We're not working at all on screen here, my friend Denny. <laughs> neither, neither of us. Neither of us <laughs> well, it's a nice, this. nice. <laughs> okay. Sorry, guys. When I actually have to do work, I can't. I can't police Denny's <laughs> movements. And I don't police yours at all. No, no. Then he's kind enough not to do that. Then he's just pretty much oblivious. That's all right. <laughs> then he says, I just do the leather work. If you want me to do something else, you're going to have to tell me to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Brian, Freja. Oh, well, he's Brian now, so watch your glue. Ready to go. Yeah, those both have two coats, so. Don't you guys love watching glue dry? We, we bring it just for you. Bring you the art of glue drying. <laughs> Woke up Luna. So, Denny, these two saddlebags that you made last week and this week are both very, very similar in construction. Right. Um, it's just one has this little fun top to it. Otherwise, this one's just a smaller version and doesn't have the loops. Exactly. Yeah. But then the other ones that you have made for us, you've got the the, the cow needle in situation, the yeah, doctor's the bag. doctor's bag. But next week, mm -hmm. we're going to make a big saddlebag, which will be 10 by 12. <clears throat> Which is a pretty good sized bag, and we're going to make it out of softer leather. Oh, okay. So instead of a, like, it's a little bit um, uh, a soft construction. Yeah. Just to change things up. How exciting. You guys ready for a soft bag? It'll be like nothing we've ever done before. <laughs> Am I on camera at all? Nope. Nope. <laughs> Am I now? Um, well, you were, but now your hat's. There it is. Good job, Justin. <laughs> he 
got you from the side now because then you got on camera, but then your hat got in the way. Are you shipping out some Springfield water to Prescott for the coffee? No, I don't think we're going to go that far. Okay, let me just get to that. Don't forget to backstitch. <laughs> Tony, I know you're not watching, but I got you. Usually the delivery drivers like to drive down our alley just honking the whole time. Yeah, Marshall, so sorry I missed your question up there about the machine. I would still probably recommend the 26 for what you're doing if you're mostly doing just a heavy holster and then other lightweight things. The 26 is going to be the best. Because for me... Like, holsters are pretty simple sewing construction. Um, and so if you wanted to, you could, like, if you, if you wanted a heavier stitch on your holsters, you could still, like, hand sew that. Or, like, what, this goes up to a 277 thread, correct? Right. Yeah, I wouldn't use over a 207 on this. 207 okay. is, shoot. It's good. You yeah. can tow your pickup truck with this stuff. Yeah. I mean. Usually I just like visually people. Yeah. Sometimes they like a heavier stick. Everybody says heavier is better. Not necessarily. That's not necessarily. But. Um. So I, the, the 26 is, is good. And then, you know, when it comes to like purses or wallets or all of those other things, they need a lighter weight machine. They need something like this. They can go and then they have way more stitching and construction than a holster does. Yeah. You know, and so I would, I would get a machine that's going to do your, your, your most intense sewing projects. And then for the things that you maybe can't do with the 26, then you hand sew those. I, you know, but this is going to do a conceal and carry belt. Like this is what we sew all of our conceal and carries yeah. on is, is you know, and 207. A, so. And a heavy holster with a, with a big welt in it. You know, if you would skive that welt down a little bit on, mm -hmm. on the outside edge. Yeah. You know, you, you, you can reduce a lot some of that. Doing that. Yeah. You can still use this one. The 26 is just a really fantastic machine. It is the one we sell the most of it um, since it came out on the market um, maybe five years ago. It's a fairly new machine. Uh, well, as far as leather machine goes, it's, it's a newer one that they started stocking. And it really got a lot of great versatility to it. It does decently heavy things, but it still does all your lightweight stuff. So that's the problem with the three and the four is they just don't do lightweight. They don't do it. They don't like it. It doesn't look good. Their needles are all too big. It's a whole different needle system. Um, it's, it's, it's not a lightweight machine. You, you're not going to make a wallet. You're not going to probably make a handbag with a three or a four. You're just not going to do it. Well, you know, there are, it's it's rated to to stitch lightweight stuff, but it doesn't do a pretty job. Exactly. You know? The needle is so big, like even the small needle. Yeah, it just it's a is big. Stitch. Yeah. Um.
and it doesn't, and to move it, like, if you do heavyweight and lightweight stuff, to go from sewing, a, like, you know, a layer of four to five, or a layer of two, three, to a layer of four, five, and then going up to sew heavyweight, you know, going to sew that, that holster or something that's, that's pretty, pretty heavyweight on there. It's just not happy. Like, the, the machine doesn't like to change tensions from one to another, back and forth, and to go to, to do all of that. You can do it. But you really need to be a pretty darn good sewing machine mechanic to to not mess up your she machine really good in the course of doing all of that. God's sake, don't drill holes in machines. You think you know better. Don't do that. machine in here we're really actually we should be I don't know. it never works well You gotta put your lid on, and then we're pretty much, and then you can lace it. Yeah. Then you will sand the edges later. We're almost at our hour, and I feel like you can finish. Yep. Try. I really that's that's really strange, Michael. I've never heard of any sewing machine going through the post office before and not on a pallet. So I'm not sure who shipped that, but that's crazy. Well, it says like UPS brought it to the post, but I don't. I've never seen a machine not be pallet. Like we only ship on a pallet through freight. So I, that's um, usually the mail won't accept things that are that heavy. I don't know. Or it's just, it's freight. Sorry, guys. <laughs> This is a pink clean right here. That is. And he's on it. The wrist doesn't have to hold like the other ones. Hold it in place until I get it stitched. This is where someone asked about sticking his head across. Not much else we can do.
wonder what a class two is. Never heard of a class two. Next time you make me stay in the lines, I'm going to need you to give me a smaller brush. <laughs> okay. I did not do a very good job. <laughs> well, whatever the issue is, you are. Is the 26 user friendly for a beginner? I think so. Uh, it's probably the most user friendly machine I've ever been on. <clears throat> Believe me, I need user friendly. I wasn't making a group. I was using um, it's called a we call it a rougher. So a leather rougher. It's basically just like a little metal tool that is like an emery, like a little emery tool that scratches up the leather, so that. Your cement will soak into the leather because if you attempt to put contact cement on the top of finished leather, it's not going to soak in because it's a nice finished grain. Um, so you have to rough it up and expose some of the inside nappy bits so that it soaks into the leather. We saw, if you look up rougher on the website, you can find it, this little tool. I think we also have like a, a larger. Yeah, we've got. We've got the big one that's like the wool card. Mm hmm Yeah. But this little detail rougher. Maybe that's what it's called a detail rougher. <laughs> oh, from Sailrite. All right. Yeah, those are like portable machines. That makes more sense that those were shipped um, through just regular ground. That makes a lot more sense. <laughs> yeah. We used to sell sale rights here. They're more like, almost like a home machine. Yeah. They're a heavier duty home machine made for heavy duty, for sales, for canvas sales, so that you can fix your sales while at sea, because that's important, so you don't die. Well, at sea without a sail, you're sailing with us. <laughs> Yeah, I think you're that's called dead in the water. <laughs> you're floating. You're floating. <laughs> yeah. The ocean is scary. People that are like, I'm going to do ocean things for fun are crazy. Like, I'm just, there's, there's some screws loose. I mean, it's really cool. And uh, razor blades, if you're listening, like, more power to you. But there's things in the ocean that we don't know are in the ocean. And... And and the water doesn't care about you. Not that the land is. Yeah, the sea is scary. I don't know. Things that can just swallow you and not even know you were there. I just, you know, uh, it's uh we're not we're not water dwellers. Us people with feet. I don't know. There are some people like watching um, the Hawaiians that walk on the the, the yeah, like walk on the sea bed with the rocks. Yeah. They can like hold their breath for minutes at a time while trudging through. I they're surfers though. They're trading for surfing. I think that's their thing. Crazy. Those people are amazing, but also a little crazy. I'm just those. That's how I feel about that. The water is scary. I don't swim well. It's not my forte. I've always been a very thin person, which means I'm not very buoyant. 
and it takes a lot of work to keep me afloat. <laughs> okay, but, oh, oh, we're doing this thing, huh? Doing this thing. And had his boat sunk by a whale. Yeah. I mean, I think whales are amazing. I had an amazing time in Alaska on my cruise. Like, that was spectacular. But we could mostly see the land at all times. Not that, like, but, like, just, I don't know. People that, that do the ocean thing. No, it like just thinking about it like gives me a knot in my stomach. Like you can't drink salt water. You literally will die if you run out of water and it doesn't rain so that you can get some fresh water. I would die. You're surrounded by water. I would, I would die because just... I would drink it. <laughs> <laughs> Anything wet. Mm -hmm. If I didn't have my donkeys, I'd be out in the ocean waiting. I, like, I love the ocean. I like looking at it. I like being on the beach. Like, there's something magical, which I'm, like, about looking at the ocean, like, feeling the waves. I 100%. I get it. But it's terrifying. Like, just being out there in a little boat. Even just, you know, like, trudging out into the ocean. It's... Yeah. <laughs> okay. I... I like being in a canoe. Canoes are nice. Well, just because you're on a river and you can see the bank ten feet away. From exactly. You. <laughs> I I don't like it when I see a gar. I don't like it when I can't see the bottom of the river. I don't like to get out of the boat. In those situations, you want to come say hi, Liz? Come say hi. Hello. Yeah. See. Yeah. People that work. Like there's a there's a there's a knife maker couple that's out in Alaska, the Derosiers. If you've ever heard of them, they're both master bladesmiths. They make amazing stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but they came mm -hmm. from, or at least Haley, her her family are fishermen, like Alaska fishermen. And she'll go out with them like once a year, and she goes and does her catch for the year or whatever. And then like that's what they eat, and they do the whole hunting thing. But like. <laughs> I like she posts pictures from time to time, and I'm like, this is wild. This is this is a different breed of person. Absolutely. Is it cowboy? Is it cowboy hat day or something? Absolutely, Heath. It is cowboy hat day. Jenny and I made a plan. Oh, um, let's do let's do. Isaac, can you help me pull the table forward just a little bit? We're gonna we're gonna get you on here so people can see what you're doing. Isaac is gonna hold, please. We're we're almost done. We're gonna watch Denny lace this bag up. You're okay. As long as you're you the rest. I just want to get in a little bit closer. Perfect. There we go. Okay. Yep. All right. Here we go. <laughs> There's always a maybe involved maybe. when I'm here. I do not get in the water anymore. I swim in a circle. Aww. <laughs> Michael with his one arm swims in a circle. That sounds like my wife. We have kayaks and she paddles in circles. <laughs> You're not alone, Michael. Yeah. And she has two arms, so she really has no excuse. <laughs> do you want the other brick? Uh, I think I'm okay. Okay. Once I get started here. Oh, are you doing the gaucho weave again? Yes, this is the gaucho weave. Okay. There we go. Gaucho weave, the only trick to it is you've got to go through each hole twice. And on the very first one, you've got to go through the first hole three times. Three times. Good work. I've never, I've never had a, a hat that wasn't fitted because I've never had a hat before, and I just, I never wore baseball caps. I'm just not a hat person. Well, I put this thing on, and I was like, 
Turns out I could be a hat person. You can wear a cowboy hat. <laughs> There's lots of people that cannot. Like Isaac, he's sad about it. I've never really tried, but I just don't think it's a thing. You never know. Puppy treat! Maybe you want a treat? <laughs> Justin was the top not working. Is he getting his hat in the way? Yeah, good idea. Was hot. Yeah, I had a good, I, we probably spent a half an hour with this dude named Neil, where where my friend Emma works down in Houston, and uh, I think he'd been selling hats for most of his life. He's probably about your age, did he? I would imagine. Mm -hmm. And so we just chatted at his little hat bar. He had a very nice hat bar. The bar was the shape of the hat, so you could put it. Oh, I did it wrong. Don't judge me, guys. Thank you. Upside down. So you could put it like this on his bar because the bar was shaped correctly for the hats. Yeah, Luna's pretty gentle until she tries to bite your nose. But with food, she's very gentle. Is your is your brain misfiring? No, <laughs> my life is never <laughs> Here I gave you a treat. It was a fun little, fun little experience. He kept putting these little pads in on the sides because my head is a size seven long oval, and so he got it stretched out a little bit for me from front to back. And then when I put it on, it still kind of did the side to side wiggle wobble situation and so then he started doing a little bit of padding around the edge here to smooch up the, the sides bring them in so now it doesn't it doesn't wiggle wobble oh Demi. My head's mm -hmm. My hand, sorry. you need to start <laughs> over again no <laughs> uh, oh, finally <laughs> You need your 10 pound weights. Yeah. There it is. There it is. That's better. Okay. Sorry, I stole all your stuff. We're about to get on track here. I always got to do the major deal, you know. Difficult to find those holes from the bottom. Especially with that one, because this is one I've had to go through three times. Okay. Now, under this one. See what that top looks like. There we go. Don't lean in too far. Thank you. Or put you in a back brace. Keep you <laughs> gear. Be long now, folks. Ron. Ron says every day is cowboy hat day for him. He feels naked without it. All right. That's, I feel like Dondi is the same. If Dondi doesn't have a hat on. He's our he's Don, our resident cowboy. Dondi has changed his mo though. Yeah, he's not wearing a cowboy hat anymore. I know he's got the like the fedora style. Yeah.
That's what Lindsay got when she was in Dallas. She got the little kind of fedora style hat. What size holes are those, Denny? Like quarter inch? Yeah, about a quarter. I should have went a little bigger hole. They use a little smaller thing. I'm going to make sure Amy on my head is boy. Orin? Orin? Uh, not, not yet. We're we're kind of preemptively doing these videos, and then uh, Denny is working with our R and D guys to to have these patterns coming out. It'll it'll probably be maybe a couple months though before the the pack is ready. Here's what I'll do. I'll just water this thing. Chalk Rock Ranch out in Wyoming says a nine millimeter bullet casing uh, makes the perfect size hole. Yeah. <laughs> it does. I've known a lot of guys who use shell casing to punch all the wood. I mean, Tony just wears sportswear. I don't, I don't know if it's all that vibrant. Absolutely. <clears throat> but it's still sportswear. <laughs> I have not Odin. I'm going to do that this weekend. So, got a piece at home and I have been kind of rearranging my workshop at home, so that's been my focus the last well, I started it this week. So, I started rearranging everything, but um so I will hopefully be attempting to hydro dip that snake skin this weekend and then I'll bring it in next week if it goes well. If it doesn't go well, I'll just keep it to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the red outfit. Yeah, I've got that picture over on my wall. It's a Christmas suit. It's just a terrible suit. I'm not even going to say that out loud. You guys can read that comment. <laughs> Is that just an olive oil finish? This is a, it's a neat foot oil with a, with a Sheridan Brown antique paste. Antique, uh, yeah, paste. Mm -hmm. Don't have the Sheridan Brown. Paste or in a gel. Did you saddle soak that lace? Yeah, I should have saddle soaked it again. Just I'm getting there, you guys. <laughs> All right, Odin. If it doesn't go well, I'll still bring it in. I am really curious. I'm curious. I don't know. Because the really cool thing, so like when we dyed the, the python skins last week, I when when we did the black, it it wasn't cool because it took away all the characteristics of the python. Like when we did the yellow and the green and the orange, um, all the dark sections of the skin still showed up dark. You weren't covering anything. You were just changing the light section. So you still got to see like the actual texture. I, I don't know what to call it. The python scales are literally colored. Naturally. There's a variation in color. And so you could still see all of that. Um, so I'm curious because I know the paint is going to cover it. So I'm curious to see what will happen. I don't know. 
We'll see. I'll bring it in. <laughs> we sell raw hide cream. It stays pretty sturdy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me that, Odin. We're almost we're almost out of them. I mean, high dogs move pretty quickly. I'm sure those flew from tree to tree to some extent. Yeah. No. Very Snakes moving. Uh -huh. William, we didn't sell any python yesterday. We sold it last week. So we got in those crazy, huge python skins. Um, they, they were just really crazy. Uh, if you, we had a post on like Facebook and Instagram, I think, that kind of showed I was unrolling. Most of them were between five to six meters long. They were at least a foot wide in most places, maybe, I don't know, like nine inches to a foot wide at the narrowest, up to 16 to 20 inches at the widest, um, 200 bucks for a full skin. These specifically are, were very, very sturdy. Now, most snake skins are very thin, and while I wouldn't necessarily call them like super delicate, they are very thin. Like I've got some water snake over here that is just quite, it, this is, it, it's thin. Like I can, I mean, I don't want to pull it because it's sold. I don't want to pull it and rip it, but. Um, but the pythons were like dinosaurs, <laughs> like something you would see on a movie. Yeah. Most of them were in like the three to five ounce range, but we had a couple that came in that were upwards of seven ounces. A spray. You want to spray something on. So you could use a Sadillac or, um, Master's Quick Shine. Um, there is, no, I, I, I think the exotic was just like a conditioner cleaner thing that we have. So any, any sort of spray, that's what I would recommend. So it kind of gets up and in all those scales and in all those weird spots. I do think you have to be worried about, like, if you do make a belt out of it, like pulling the scales in and out of your, your belt loops may not be the happiest. Seesaw got hers in, and it, it, they're incredible. They're just really cool. We're done. <laughs> Patrick said he could follow what you did. That's impressive. All right. All right. There we go. So these are your what pommel, bags. pommel bags for Pete's sakes. And that's never going to happen. All right. That's your pommel bags. They're, They're bug eyes. They're cute. Bug eyes. Bazinga. Bazinga. All righty, folks. That took a little longer than I was expecting it to take, but that is all right. It did, didn't it? <laughs> Sorry. We got through. Um, I, I feel like the Gaucho Brady on last week's bags was a little bit snappier. It, it went a little bit quicker. So if, if you had problems following that one, you can check out last week's. Um, but then next week we will be back. What are you going to do next week? We're going to do oh, the soft, the, the large soft. 10 by 12. 10 yeah, by 12. Out, out of a, not really a, a shaft leather, but a softer leather. Than this. All right. An so oil tan type leather. Those won't be tools. They won't be tools. They won't be tools. All righty. You, you can make them out of a vegetable tan leather and do them if you desire. Okay. Well, we'll talk about that next week. Thanks for joining us. Have a great weekend. Put my hat on backwards. <laughs>